Hi folks, we may have just found the holy grail of Fixstream. It's not just super glue, it's super glue with painter's tape and a few other tricks. This is awesome though because it's cheap, everybody can do it, it's shockingly reliable, and it gives you full access to the part profile. Let's dive in. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Setting up what will become our semi-sacrificial subplate for this first part. We tend to use aluminum and you can reuse it. You can also use something like wood or MDF. Just be careful, especially with coolant, because coolant will cause that wood to swell and move on you. We've got the Superfly sticking out a little longer than I normally like to. 2,500 RPMs. 12 thousandths of an inch feed, or about 30 inches a minute. We are decking off our fixture plate. You don't actually have to do this. One of the reasons we're doing it here isn't even so much to improve the surface finish, which is what the Superfly does a really good job of, but to make sure our part is flat. Next up, we are using 2D Adaptive to machine a small groove in the left-hand side. Any guesses what that's for? Ends up that it's RFI, that stands for really important, or rather really helpful. Card here to the NYC CNC website where you can download the Fusion 360 CAD and CAM for both this Fender Jaguar plate as well as the Hell Test part. You might remember we first showed this trick back when we made the nameplates for our repeatometer. Since then, we've refined the process and really pushed the envelope in terms of using it for long and aggressive operations. All right, here's a quick look at all the supplies we'll be using to do this. Painter's tape and super glue being the most important. And also something to scuff your pieces with, burnishing tool of some kind, a clamp, and some isopropyl alcohol. A good prep is everything when doing this technique, so you want to do all you can to improve your chances of success. First, we'll scuff the pieces. And clean them with acetone or alcohol. Get rid of all that residue that might make the tape come loose. apply your tape. One of the key things that gives this a leg up over double-sided tape is this ability to burnish the tape down to both surfaces before you attach them. This drastically improves the bond. Make sure not to trap any air bubbles. You do that on both sides and apply some pretty good downward force there. I'll even clean the tape with alcohol before gluing, which is probably overkill, but I've never had a part come loose. And here we're using Loctite 4851. The regular Loctite Professional Super Glue works fine. This is available anywhere locally for under $10 a tube. And try to make sure you leave paths for the air to escape between the glue as you press the part down. In case there's any bow to the part, I like to clamp it in the middle and leave it for a few minutes. And last up on thin parts, I'll do a knock test to listen for any loose areas. As John mentioned earlier, I have the Superfly set pretty wide here, but I wanted to cover this plate in one pass.
Anybody else notice we're starting to get a little bit of tearing on the top edge of our cutting tool. If we head over to the library and we type microscope. We've got the three different microscopes that we use and this left one is $5. You have to buy this. Take a look at your tool, see if the edge is compromised. Anytime we're using vacuum fixturing, or in this case, super glue fixturing, do all your precision work first and keep the whole part under super glue contact before you profile it out. Even if that means you have to start the profile and say go part way down, still allowing the super glue to do its job across the whole part before you start profiling out your actual part. Here we're doing a 2D contour, but we're taking advantage of the ramp functionality under edit linking the last tab. You can see the ramp angle at two degrees as well as the max step down. You can adjust that to take even slighter step downs if you need to. You'll also notice, and this is one of my favorite tricks, this, this 2D contour is effectively a roughing pass because we've got five thou of radial stock remaining. We then come back and give it our final cleanup pass and that has the benefit of not slotting. Yes, there's only five thousandths of clearance on the back side of the tool, because where the tool is actually cutting is only along the part profile, which is exactly what I want. Final cleanup chamfer. If you're new to this or you're uncertain or you're concerned, Indicators and metrology tools are your friends. Grab that inexpensive indicator, set it up on the side of your part, preferably somewhere where the tool isn't gonna machine through it. You can use that to see, is your part flexing, is it moving? And if you really wanna go crazy, you can set up indicators in X, Y, and Z, again, to look for and anticipate or predict if there's going to be a problem. So that pocket is really helpful to help remove the part. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Here we are applying a little bit of bend pressure with a screwdriver, which can bend the part. So just be careful of that. We've used various tools like paint scrapers and razor blades. Two other ways to break up super glue, or if I'm gonna pronounce it right, cyanacrylate. So a heat gun, hair dryer, or something to again help break that bond, or soaking the part in acetone. For the second part, it's roughly the same process. Don't be afraid to try some different types of tape here. The cheaper the masking tape is, the better it tends to stick. I ended up applying a little bit too much glue here, so I just wrung it out to spread the excess. A little accelerator around the edges won't hurt either. Plus, I wanted to dry all the glue I just spread around the fixture. One of the nice things that Ed discovered about the Loctite 4851 is it tends to set much more quickly, meaning you don't have to worry about your part rotating even when you're applying the clamp. Card here, folks, to our speeds and feeds recipes for the shear hog, but this is going all out. 10,000 RPMs, 80 inches a minute, that's eight thousandths of an inch feed per tooth. 0.1 inch optimal load or width of cut. And 0.2 inch maximum roughing step down, AKA depth of cut.
Heat is a way to help break up super glue. That also means you've got to be conscious of your part getting hot. I was a little nervous about this. It's a big part. Honestly, I've never done one this big, this aggressively. It worked great. We were also just running this on flood coolant on one of our Haas machines, and so far, it's been working great. So preliminary results, flood coolant doesn't affect it, but more testing to do. Build up a recipe, probably not the best thing to walk away from, especially when you're just getting started. Folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. Here's the thing, the one downfall to this is there is some setup time involved. Don't worry about it. Card here to the Wednesday widget when we made the KTM motorcycle bracket by using a hot swappable mini pallet that can drop into any sort of a vice system or fixture plate. That way you can do your super glue offline and just swap your parts. And for those of you that are looking to learn Fusion 360, to learn CNC, to learn about manufacturing entrepreneurship, check out the new NYC CNC. There's a ton of content there that's not on our YouTube channel. So I would encourage you guys to take a look. The filter system on the library is an awesome way to go find that content, including things like fixturing, work holding, process reliability, how to take a product and bring it into production, how to find out if your product or your business is a good idea. Stuff I'm super passionate about and look forward to sharing with you guys. Take care, folks. See you soon.